Hey everybody, and welcome back to uh, Hydroneer. Welcome to my attic. I, I never did make myself a bedroom. <laughs> I don't. I just don't care in this game. Uh, the amount of times I have to sleep and whatnot. So um, I did a bunch of work, like uh, a lot of other games. Uh, little disclaimer: I took off for a while. I had to go do some work out of town. I took my laptop and I did a whole bunch of work to a whole bunch of games. So um, this is my garden. Not really anything special. I mean, I bring it in, I bump it up so that the sprinklers will work at full, you know, full bore. And then uh, I, I have, it's just a modest garden down below. Okay. Um, my fishing rod collection. So I went fishing lots. The, uh, bring the garden, bring the bounty in. Dump it down there. Goes down there. Goes through the choppers. After the choppers, it just gets separated by, you know, standard separators. And then just gets kicked into here. And then I pull it out of here, bring it over to the kitchen, blah, 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 do up the thing. Um, this is really neat because after I'm done with this, um, open that up and it reloads the thing. I buried the, um, whatchamacallit, into the dirt there. Still works. Uh, yeah, bowls, you know, da, da, da. Uh, I did get myself about 7000 on top of being able to buy all this stuff from the uh, 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 garden place, basically. Um, you know, I was it, it, lots of seeds. It was a lot of, I mean, it was work, but it was, I had fun gardening. I don't know, it, was, it wasn't that bad. Um, not a lot of changed in here in the workshop. I got to shut down because I just don't need it. Um, uh, I've already shown you phase one. I mean, this was the the first level that I went down to. I, I had, I didn't know how, but I did have full plans on coming down. Uh, I need it now, Claudium pipe coming all the way in. So it separates off into um, the usual uh, golden pipe here, and then the Claudium keeps going downstairs. Um, this one, I it was really neat. Found myself a nice uh, iron deposit, you know what I mean, and, and capitalized on it. And then when I went downstairs, I found a nice Claudium deposit down here, and I put in a bunch of these. And this just. <sighs> The uh, amount that I make out of this is just, it's silly. Um, I shut it all down because I don't, uh, I did all the questing. Um, my last gold bar, I'm like 1.9 million in, in gold. That doesn't include the iron. You know what I mean? Like 2 million in iron. It's just silly what, uh, what I have now. And I'm sitting at about 14 million in cash. I didn't see a point. Um, I had finished all of the requisitions and everything for the questing. I did the food one. I did this one. And now I need to fish. So I built myself, after doing all the Claudium pipe all the way up back, I built myself a little fishing hut. And I put down a bunch of fishing traps because my fishing hut wasn't really working. Um, I did get a shark, but it was like a 1.28 shark, and I need a 1.5 shark. I did get the um, level 8 pole, uh, a little collection of Ghibli Yuki and a whole bunch of fish, and I still haven't found a 1.5 shark. The uh, workshop. So I started to, um, you know, collect stuff and bring things over, and uh, you attach the carts, you go in, you buy a bunch. And you just basically click, 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 put it into the cart and then hook the cart up to the back of your truck and you can just drive the carts here with all sorts of stuff in them. It gets a little laggy. And then I started to build this. Now I unhooked all of this stuff and brought it over to the other place. Um, and I'll show you that switch in a minute. But that's my, I figure everybody needs a, uh, and I went and I got all sorts of stuff. You know what I mean? I was making so much money, whatever. I didn't care. I got lots of parts and pieces left over. Lots of stuff. Lots of Claudium that I never even used. Okay. The switch. Now, what I made in here um, the last video was a switch. Now, uh, there's a gentleman that I talked to on, um, which one call it? Uh, Discord. And he got a hold of me after I made the last one. We were chatting a little bit. He's actually uh, the commenter in, in that video, the first one. Uh, but he's on Roboticost. Uh, pretty cool guy. Um, he gave me a different timer. Now, the last time I went out, uh, my line went out, it looped around, and it came back. And I had to do it that way with the way my timer was. And it was a, it was kind of a bulky timer. It was, uh, but this is a little more streamlined. 
And I'm going to show you once again. So you don't need to watch the previous video if, you, if you've never seen it. Don't worry about it. Um, if you're not all that up on logistic networks, it's come, sometimes can be kind of hard because people will use a lot of terms and you're like, well, what did that mean? Okay, I'm going to try to use very simple terms. This is just a switch. It's, it's called a logic repeater. Imagine it's a switch. Okay, and once you turn it on, it goes one, 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 one. Um, I have a display somewhere around here. One, one, one. It never sends out a zero. It only sends out a one, and it continues to send out a one. Now, in order to be able to stop this, because you can't click on this. I'm, I'm left-clicking. I can't click on it. So we have this switch. Now this is an on off switch. You can also change what the, the symbol is down below, by the way. Okay. I'm going to put it back to you there, a stop sign so that I know that it stops it. Um, now this continues. This is a one. Stops it. starts it. Now these valves are, are useful um, not only for passing logic or water. So you use them on um, you can put that on a water pipe and then hook a switch like this up to it and you can turn off water pipes that way. Uh, I did have a previous video on you touch a button and you refill the tank on your car. That, that one was kind of neat. Um, it's got lots of views, lots of likes. So it's just a simple little button switch turns on a water pipe, has a little timer attached to it. It's a really neat little system. So I attach this just so I can turn it off. I'm going to keep it going though. Okay. So this, remember, this is a one. One, 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 one. And it will continue to be a one and it will basically never end, never stop being a one. Um, and that's kind of important to know that that'll never, never change. Okay. So from there, we need, and what, what this was is it, it, counts up to five, five seconds, and then changes the color. Now, before I was using, um, yeah, I don't know if you want to go look at the previous video. Hang on. Coffee. Hang on. Mm. Gotta have coffee. I don't know whether you want to go watch the previous video where I showed that I used, there's delay timers that you can attach to the logic lines. And these delay timers are, yeah, okay, they're kind of nice. Um, so from here, I want to turn upwards. Because I'm going to, instead of making this be a horizontal switch, meaning I, I have it against the wall. Uh, come here, you. Let's get the buttons right. Okay, so I want to turn it up. Um, now... In order to make a resetting counter, let's call it that, we need um, to use uh, what's called logic add. Um, this is a logic equals, this one's a logic divide. Okay, so let's handle this one. Adds both A and B logic values when um, either value is passed on. Okay, so when you want to count up, then you need to use one of these. Oops. Helps you push the right button. Okay, am I on the right side? No. Come here, can't get far enough away. Okay. Now, I want to add A to B. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a little logic cable. I'm going to come around and I'm going to add, I'm going to put it back into here and it's going to start counting up. Um, do I get a T? T. Now, I'm hoping I have enough displays for all this. Let's put that there. Okay, so you notice there's no signal going out through B. You notice there's no zaps, no zippy zappies up there, but there is one here. So B doesn't let anything go out, but it allows something to come in, meaning the, the whole point behind... A plus B, right? And each side of these logic gates, they are officially basically a logic gate. 
Um, so it compares whether it be a greater than less than, whether it be a um, divided by an equals. Uh, I think I got some multipliers out here. These ones work on a multiplier and an equals equals. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll run through what that does. And it just repeats all the way down the line there. I built all this this time so that you didn't have to watch me build it again. It's, this comes down to the timer. And the timer is kind of the important thing here. Um, it's a repeating, resetting timer. And we are now going to, from there, I need a T. Because we need to have basically... I was going to say an integer. Okay, let's not. I'm trying to stay non difficult layman terms. Uh, come on. Why is this? There. That's the button. Okay, so this one just splits the signal. So now we're getting the signal out both sides. So this is a one, 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 right? So one is going out. Uh, I believe we need to turn. Bring that in. Um, yeah, let's let's bring it. We can bring it forward. That should be this one. Okay. So our divider is going to be five, by the way. Okay. So we're going to send the signal out. It's going to count up. Come in here and get. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, that can't be a straight. T intersection. No, oh, no, no, no. Let's let's just goof this up totally. This is where your divide comes in. Um, divides A from B, logic values when either value is passed in. Now, remember it's A from B. So B won't send out a signal. A accepts the signal. So I now have to switch this upside down. Because that's how A, if we look at the bottom side of this, remember, A is on the left-hand side, B is on the right. So, there. Now, what this is doing is it's accepting the 1 signal and then trying to divide it by 5. It's not doing it, so it's shoving out a 1, I think. I'm not absolutely sure, nor, nor do I. I don't want to say I don't care, but I don't really care. Oops. That's not what I wanted to grab. Where did that light go? That's hilarious. What did I do with the light? Huh? I bet you I buried it in the... Yeah, I buried it. <laughs> That's funny. We need a control Z take back button in this game. <laughs> for, for when idiots like me screw up. Okay, so... Um, so, let's continue this signal. Um, I need to do a, a, a wrap around, meaning I need to loop this back up. I'm going to use T intersections to do that. And a turn, turn, turn. Okay, now we're getting a 66, 67. See, this was counting, right? 72, 73, and it could, just keeps going. So if I put logic on there and do I got a display yes I do Oops. okay so if you take 88 divide it by 5 you'll get 17 because as soon as we get to do 100 this should be 20 95 should be 19 yeah and then 98 99 100 divided by 5 is 20 so this is all working well now the problem is is that this is never going to stop so I need to put a stop in here somehow. Okay. And for that, we're going to use that valve. Do, 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 do. So now, well, when do I want it to reset? Like, when do I want this number to stop? For that, we use what's called an equals, if you notice. Compares A and B will output a logic value of 1 or 0. 
So when you hit A or B, when A equals B, you'll send out a one. Okay. Then I'll show you a little trick. So that means that this sends out, what the, there we go. Nope, wrong way. Ha <laughs> ha, R, R. Okay, so when the value of A is equal to the value of B, put out a one. Otherwise, put out a zero. And do we have another display? Yes, we do. Let's put that on there. TT. Put out a zero. Okay, so how are we going to change that? We need to change that to a one. Okay, uh, we need to turn just so we can keep this looking at each other. Uh, T. No, would have been the X. Or not X, sorry. Y. So now we need this one. Now this is all preset because I already TT. Okay. Now it's doing a zero because it's 200. I got no way to reset it. I need to be able to reset that. Let's do a turn. Let's do a straight. Um, T intersection here. Now this is where we put one of these logic gates. Okay, now it's stopped because it doesn't know what to do. So we use the tricky one. So this will change uh, an incoming logic of zero, which this is a zero, into a one because we want to change this to a one. And anything that's one will turn it into a zero. So there. Switch. But we haven't, we don't know. So we need to wrap the signal around. There we go. Another one. Should be T, yeah. Oh, come on. Well, I'm going to have to put a straight on there first. Wait, can I? There I go. I got it. Okay, now, I don't know whether I need this, absolutely, but I'm going to put one in there anyway. Um, this one tells it that it can only go one direction. Okay. So now I've reset it. I had to do it manually the first time because it went beyond 100. So now, if I wait around, this will go to 100. Remember, this is constantly putting out a zero. As soon as this 100, because this is, do I have another display? No, I don't. Okay, well, we don't need that one. T, Y. Huh? Huh? Okay. So as soon as this, this is the same number. So this signal right now is 43. Now this is dividing it by five. So of course it's nine. Nine times five is 45. 10 times five is 50. 50. So all the, all the fives up to 55 will make it 11, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So this signal is still generating one, it's going around and coming back and getting added. A plus B, which is why we're going to 67, 68, 69. And just imagine this little signal is going around in a loop. Now, when this signal, 78, equals 100, it will send a 1 up the line. And remember what this does. It turns a 1 signal into a 0 signal and a zero signal into a one signal. Do I have another? Well, we know what that number is. Okay. So right now, remember, this is switching it. So this is actually a zero coming out of here. And then, well, I don't want to miss it. <laughs> I'll cut two right before 100. 
Okay, and we're almost there. 98, 99, 100. This sent out a signal. You, you could barely see it. It sent out a signal of 1, which switched it to a 0. That 0 activated that gate, which reset the number. And now we go back to... And that's how the number gets reset. Okay, and that's the whole purpose behind... It shuts this off so that this signal can't keep coming in. The signal goes around, and it becomes a 1 and resets the timer. And then this starts to add up again. And that's how... I hope I'm explaining that right. So this gets turned off. So the number 39, 40. If I were to put a, a gate on the, you would see that this number is... I remember I had the display over here, and it was the same number as this. So this is the, the loop... Okay. So every once in a while at 100, I need to stop this loop from continuing to add itself. Right? So that stops the gate, closes it off. The zero gets passed up here, can't go backwards, gets passed down, and zero resets this. And then it continues and goes back to one and two and three. And that's how that timer works. Nice, nice timer. I, I like it. Um, when, um, uh, robot, uh, robotic cost. I really hope I'm saying that right. When he showed it to me on, on the, uh, Hydroneer discord, uh, this was quite a while ago, by the way. And I, I, I've come back to it now, but yeah, see the zero popped up here. Okay. So that basically explains that now. The signal that comes out of here is a one, a two. After five blips, it'll go to three. Now, I, I like the five blips. This can be changed. This is your divided by number. So that means it'll take this number and divide it by five. So that means because this is one every second, so it's one, two, three, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one, Mississippi, seven, Mississippi, eight, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's one every second. And so I take that and divide it by five. That means it's five seconds worth. I could make it four, eh, but then you got to adjust this number by however many colors you have. Okay. So because I'm going with five, 100 divided by five is 20. I will have 20 numbers divided amongst these. Okay. Cause I got 20 different colors plugged into here. Let me explain how this works before I hook this up. The signal 14 in this case goes into this line and goes all the way down. Okay, and if I were to unhook some of these, you would notice it kind of goes down, uh, how to say it, it's almost like a string of lights, and then all the way down, and then all the way down, and then you'll hear that, that vut, 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 yeah, it goes vut, 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 all the way down, and it follows this string, so it sends that number, 19, 20, reset back to 1, back to 0 first, and then to 1, Okay. So at zero, it's stuck on this number, okay? Because I'm going to put a do not pass a zero. That's um, right here. Do not pass a zero, okay? Only let a logic value pass if it's one or greater. In other words, that zero that this goes to will not pass. And that is the time... That is the five seconds that number 20 is allowed to be a color for. Okay. And then it will pass nine. It'll pass 10. It'll pass. Okay. So now these pick up the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, and this goes all the way up to 20. Okay. So this is what's reading those numbers. Now let me show you how this happens. Remember, the signal comes in this pipe. Um, I should turn that one around. Huh? Okay, only let that 14 go this way. If 14 is equal to, see that's two equal signs on that? So this is the equal to, compares A to B, will output a logic value of one or zero. It's a one, okay, if it's equal. Otherwise it's a zero and it'll pulse zero. Just no different than if you rewind the video, this pulsed zero. 
right? And it was a zero. So as soon as it's a one, it goes to zero. And it's a one. So that one signal would go, oh, that's a one signal. Okay, pass a one. It can go through that because it this will not allow a zero to go through. It can't go backwards, so it goes into here. We'll take the one and we'll multiply one times B. B is this. Well, any number multiplied by one equals the number you initially multiplied it by. In other words, 255 million zero, 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 zero. Okay. Multiplied by one is still 255 million. Now, this 255, imagine it being three blocks of numbers 255, zero, 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 zero. It's an RGB code. And that's how the computer takes That's how this system takes it. So that's how, and this is repeats 20 times. Okay. This is no, di the, the rest of them are no different. So signal comes in. If it's a one, send a one. Don't let a zero go by it. Make sure it don't come backwards. Multiply it by whatever I put into this keypad. Then that signal goes up, will not go backwards, and goes down this line. Won't go into any of the rest of these because I don't want to mess nothing up. And then it goes into my lighting system. Now, let me show you how this pans out. Okay. Now what I'm hoping for is I don't have to re-put. Eh, there it goes. Okay, it's catching on. Right? Can't pass a zero. So I don't want any zeros passing through there. And I think I need to... Oh, right. Uh -huh. um, let's put that there. And I only want it to go that way. I don't want that number to go backwards. I will be honest. I sometimes use these kind of peripheral, kind of probably a little too much, maybe. Um, these are logic diode hook. Only allows logic values to pass in one direction. I can sometimes use them too much. And you'll see. With every number change, every five seconds, it changes colors. Now the number hits here 14, it takes a little while to get down to number 14, like nanoseconds or whatever, part, portions of a second. Right, and that's how that timer works. Now, as compared to my last video that I made for this system, um, thank you very much for Botacost. I keep thanking him and yeah, I mean, it was great. He gave me, uh, led me down this garden path. Now remember that this whole entire this T-intersection right here goes down underground, comes up over here, and it's all one continuous cable. Okay, that's how I got it over here. So in the nighttime, which it just became day and I just woke up, so um, this whole entire roof, uh, which we call it, lights up. And I think I'll uh, wait because I have to go get another light because I think I put my light into the... I did. <laughs> there you are. Okay, I'm going to hammer all this stuff down because it's working just fine. And uh, I'll come back in a second and I'll show you what it looks like at night. So it's now nighttime. I'm going to show you the outside of the building in a second. I wanted to reiterate, this can be changed to handle any amount of lights. This can be, you don't really need lights in this building. You could have it in a different building. Um, you would need to, um, I use chat GPT, by the way. And I asked for a fairly, fairly decent question, but it was um, I asked for a string of colors in RGB code 
that went from, you know, basically the colors of the rainbow. And I wanted 20 of them, incremental 20. And that's, this is what it pumped out. And so this can be changed. If you want three lights, then change it and change the timer. And then using a little bit of math, a um, five second timer for three lights, you would set this number to 15. If you wanted 100 different colors on a five second timer, that would be, this number would be 500. Okay. So that's how the math works. Um, when you want to shut the whole system off, now it's going to be stuck on whatever number. Okay. And I just, I added that in just to, just cause, just cause I wanted to, I don't know. I wanted to have, I wanted to have control over it. Call me weird. Now, I, I, if anyone has any, you know, if you, if you have any questions, you can't figure out the math. Uh, if you have any questions about the logic gates the, and whatnot, uh, just ask. Uh, but basically it's a, it's a looping timer. And then this part of it turns it off and then sends that same signal that turns this off, sends the same thing over here to reset. And then it starts at zero again. And then that goes to a hundred. This um, takes the number divides it by five, sends that down the line so that I split it up between 20 colors this time. I had 10 last in the last video, so I went with 20 um, just to have it a little more incremental, to have it change, you know, nicely. Huh. And it got stuck? What happened? Oh, okay. It's not quite as dark. It seems pretty light out. But yeah. And then those lights will just change every five seconds. You could bring it down to four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. You can do whatever you want with that timer. You just got to adjust the numbers. Uh, other than that, um, my auto fill up my truck. So that'll fill up the truck. A timer is attached to that light. That's on a separate video. Uh, I also have um, these auto gem compressing. That's hooked up to this one, and that's every five. Um, the logic goes in there, and I, I got the switch in there. But as soon as it turns on, and as soon as this detects five things go through, then it turns on all of these, which are hooked up to... I can't remove them. I've got them nailed down. But I got these hooked up to logistic lines. That's another video. Um, they're on my channel. They're in my playlist and whatnot. Go look them up. Uh, not a lot to do with the um, with this because you cut yourself off some of them. I mean, the workshop is the workshop. I don't think this one needs to be, you know, because you take and you uh, take your chisel and you chop up enough diamonds or enough not diamonds but rubies or emeralds or whatever you need for the ring that you're making for the um, the item acquisition and. Um, put whatever you need in here for the weight, you know, compress it. I, I didn't see a point in putting that on a logistic line. Um, these two switches run the conveyor belts and all of the miners. So when I turn all of that on, I'm going to start getting ore coming up here real quick. And starts off pretty pretty lightly at first and then you add in you know a little bit more coming out of this area which is the the tier two and then when tier three gets going let me tell you um this gets extreme you add all three of these together and it just <laughs> this is why i had the whole system turned off okay hang on I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, if, you're, if you've stuck around long enough in this video so far, I thank you very much. Thanks for your support. I hope you learned something. If you did, um, smash that like button, hit the subscribe. And uh, we will absolutely see you in the next video as I will be making more of these because um, I have fun doing it. Look at that ore. That is just an almost steady stream coming up, right? Which is why... 
I mean, I made so much. I got millions and millions of dollars. I completed a whole bunch of the the token quests and all the rest of that fun stuff. Uh, I got all the way... I, I basically got all the questing done on this side. And now I'm going to go over to the volcano. And I'm going to go check out that DLC and whatnot. And uh, probably make a video on that when I get there. But yeah, this is what it turned out being. Um, this was the build. I wanted lots of room in the workshop. And so I left myself lots of room. I wanted to park inside the workshop. You know, so that I could offload whatever I needed on, you know, whatever. I hand... Did I, I was going to do another one of these for the ATV, but ah, I just, I ended up using, um, which one call it, uh, gardening, um, the cans from the gardening. But yeah, this is why I had it turned off. Yeah. Because <laughs> it just, I mean, this just gets insane. Uh, for the amount that I had that turned on, Wait till the belt's empty here. This is just, it's a steady stream of it. I mean, it's just, yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Oh, it was awesome. And then, like, I mean, you look at the amount of cloudium and all, you know, all the rest of it that I have. Um, the system works really well. I like the game. I like how um, we went from um, quite a while ago uh, in this game. It didn't, we didn't have all this. Put it that way. There wasn't all these options, all these funny things to play with. Well, come on. How long are you going to be going here? Okay, these are empty. Okay. And yeah, I mean, I had to dig inside and then lay down the, the things and then, you know, cover back over it again. I don't know. I, I had a lot of fun digging down there. It was... Uh, I would show you a step-by-step, -step, but, but you should build your own. Um... You know, figure out your, figure out your legit your lines. Figure out your water. You uh, run the conveyor belts on a different water line than you do the pumps. Uh, the the miners, the miners get damaged if you, but the conveyor belts don't. So I don't have. Okay, there we go. Are we all done? Yep, we're all done. Turn that off. Let's pop a gold bar. In just that short amount of time. I made $64,000, right? Like, that's just, yeah, that's just extreme. Like, holy extreme. Uh, but you run your, uh, you run your, um, your miners off of a different system than your uh, conveyor belts. So one of these lines runs to the garden and one of them runs to the conveyor belts. And neither one of them has any... Um, um, which one calls on them? Uh, filters. Okay. So they just come straight out of the water and they go straight in, straight through the, I put them through the building just so it would look cool, you know, look good. The uh, core has the filters on it. And of course I have a, an auto filtration system, which I have to resupply by the way. Once again, uh, you'll find this in a different video if you're interested. Search my, uh, what you call it? Yes, you have to hand feed wrenches into these. They don't, uh, they don't feed themselves. Not as yet, anyways. Maybe he's got some plans on that. I don't know. I got a 15 in there, second one. Okay. So you can feed up to 20 wrenches into these. And then these, um, When this gets down to 10, all right, and it's just a simple logic. You'll find these in the uh, in the logic area. It's uh, a reader, right? And this tells you how bad the filter is. And then this is the um, it's a spanner chucker or spanner thrower, I think they call it. Basically, it's a wrench thrower. And that throws a wrench at this, which fixes it, which is why, like, an 84, that's just been chucked at. And when these get down to 10, they'll get fixed. And that's a very simple system. Uh, like I said, totally different video on that. And then um, I take pallets. I drive the truck back here. I go get pallets. We used to be able to make these, which is, 
Uh, if it, personally, I would like to go back to being able to make these uh, rather than having to go to a store. Uh, I could make them and put them onto a cart or put them onto a pallet, walk the pallet up here. The cart comes through the door, by the way. So it was no, no big deal getting the cart up in here. It's kind of weird, but whatever. I wasn't going to question it. Um, so that's the build. Because you're not going to see this anymore. Next, next, uh, I'm going to go over to the volcano. The next, uh, it's kind of neat how he put the volcano here. But uh, I'm going to try to get the fishing quest done. I'm going to try to get a 1.5 shark. Uh, I might show the completion of that in the next video. Other than that, thank you very much. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day. And we'll see you in the next video.